Hello, my name is Will McDonald. I work at Tanberg. I've been at Tanberg for uh, two years now. Previous to Tanberg, I was one of the founders of Codian. Tanberg acquired Codian back in 2007. One of the things that's happened since uh, Tanberg acquired Codian is that the Tanberg has restructured a little bit internally. And um, we now have what we call the Network Product Division, which includes not just the Codian products, but all of Tamberg's infrastructure products. And that's allowed us to, to focus on developing great infrastructure while the endpoint group focuses on building great endpoints. The head of the network product division is David Holloway. David was the CEO of Codian prior to the acquisition and was a co-founder of Codian with myself. Since the acquisition, all the Codian people have been very busy continuing to enhance the existing Codian products and produce new products. New products such as the High Definition Blade for the MSE 8000 that's been released since the acquisition uh, and the new Telepresence server that's also uh, a new piece of hardware that's been released by the infrastructure group uh, since the acquisition. There's also been lots and lots of enhancements going on in the software. In the same way as we used to do at Codian, uh, we're producing more and more functionality into the existing products. One example of that is the Conference Me software, a simple piece of, of software that can be downloaded to your computer, allow you to join conferences with video and with content uh, right on the MCU without needing any additional servers uh, or, or download. You can just download it right from the MCU. It's, it's, it's fantastic. The other big announcement we've made recently is support for 1080p video. So the 4500 and the 8510 blade have always supported high definition. And we've always said it would support 1080p. It's taken us a bit longer to release it than we had hoped. And the reason for that is because we didn't want to just do what everyone else is doing, which is to do 1080p video, you half your port count. That kind of goes against our philosophy. We've always believed that a port is a port. And so we wanted to produce uh, 40 ports of 1080p video in a 40 port MCU and 20 ports in a 20 port MCU. So it was quite an ambitious goal and it turned out to be a little bit harder than we expected. I'm going to just talk you through how we managed to achieve that. So before you can understand that, let's have a little recap of the architecture of the high definition MCUs. Let's look at the internals of the 4500 and of uh, the 8510 blades because there's a lot in common between the two products. The core unit is what we call the DSP tile. It's uh, a little square PCB about the, the size of a tile and it's got four DSPs on it. There are six, four, five, fives. It's a TI DSP. And they're all, all four of these are connected together with a very large high speed FPGA. And FPGA it stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And what it is, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chip that you can program different circuits into so you can change its functionality uh, based on what you want it to do. So we use it to join the, the four DSPs together and also to give us uplinks and downlinks. That allows us to stack the tiles vertically. At the bottom of each stack, they're all connected into a switch fabric. When video comes in off the network, it's compressed, H264, it goes through the switch fabric, up through the DS one of the DSP stacks, and then delivered to one of the DSPs. That DSP will decode the video and will then have uncompressed high definition video. That DSP will then send the video to other DSPs where it's needed in order to compose a new image for someone. So it can send it to a DSP on the same tile, it can send it up or down the stack to another tile on the same stack, or it can send it all the way down the stack through the switch fabric and up a different stack where it may be needed. Once all the different video streams have been gathered at some other DSP, then they're composed into a new layout, compressed into H.264 again, and sent out down the stack out onto the network. And that's the basic operation of the, uh, of the MCU and why we need such high bandwidth between the, the tiles because uncompressed high definition video is having to flow through there. Now what I want to do is look at what happens inside the tile because then we're going to see how we've managed to uh, squeeze 1080p into this, this existing architecture. So here's a tile and here you see the H.264 video coming in into one of the DSPs where it gets decoded. That video needs to be scaled before it gets sent to another DSP. Because if you think about it, 
if you're looking at a two by two image on your screen, if you're watching four other participants, if they're all sending in high definition, say they're all sending in 720p and you're on 720p, each of those four needs to be quarter size to fit on your screen. So they all have to be scaled down. And if you're watching a one plus five, then instead of being scaled down by a, by a half in each direction, the big one needs to be down by two thirds and the little ones to one third. The scaling is an important factor on this video if you're going to do continuous presence. So the video comes in, gets decoded, it gets scaled, and then it gets sent off to some other DSP. And on the other DSP, it has to get composed into whatever layout that user wants to see, be it a two by two or a one plus five. It gets encoded and then it gets uh, into H.264 and then it gets transmitted out onto the network. As you can see, a decoder and a couple of scalers pretty much fills a DSP. So how are we going to make that decoder twice as big, use up twice as many MIPS? Because that's there, there, there is pretty much twice the number of pixels in 1080p as there is in 720. So what we do is we take those scalers, which is a very repetitive and simple task, but very takes up a lot of CPU because it's a big picture, and we move those into hardware. So we add that functionality into the FPGA. So now, when we transmit the video, we transmit it to the DSP we want it to go to, but as part of the transmission, we get it scaled on the way. So we transmit it out at full resolution, it hits the first FPGA, it gets scaled, and by the time it arrives at the destination DSP, it's been scaled to the right size that's required on that DSP to do the composition. And so you can see, once that's all been moved off, there's plenty of room to put 1080p decode and encode onto those DSPs. And that allows us to do full port count, up to 40 ports on a 4520, up to 20 ports on an 8510 blade. Um, at 1080p, 30 frames a second. This is William McDonald, Chief Strategy Officer for Tanberg. Thank you.